Hello and welcome to Monsters of Den Godfall with me, Time and Tactics. This is a game that was, um, well, developed through Kickstarter, and it's a tactical turn-based RPG, so it has a lot of interesting components. There's a world map, you control um, a number of heroes, and there's a lot of tactical components to the game. Let's uh, go ahead and check out the campaign. And the campaign, by the way, I think it's a campaign that kind of um, slowly unravels the mysteries of the world. It's not... Uh, it has a lot to it, I think. Let's go ahead and start that now. So we can pick our combat difficulty here. Standard. There's a lot of options here. Beginner, an introductory difficulty recommended for players new to strategy games or RPGs. Well, I don't think that's me. Let's go to Standard. Recommended for those who have played Monsters Den before. I think I'll go with that. Seems like there's no real... Uh, everything is even out. We could go all the way up to Extreme, but look at this one. Not recommended. Probably too difficult. So let's go for Standard. Hopefully I can survive a little while at least. Continue. And the game starts. Uh, so the game is about tactical RPG, but there's also a, um, a map. An overland map where you have a keep, uh, things like that. We'll, we'll get to that soon. But they throw us right in the middle of things here. And this is us here, hooded figure. Uh, cleric Aculite. The, bo the, bo the body is mending. The ritual worked. Darnan Justicar. Impressive strength of spirit. Maybe she was right after all. What, what's going on? Uh, who are you two? We are clerics of the goddess Ariste. We have come to get you out of here. I know you're confused. With any luck, your memory will return in time. Right now, more enemies will be gathering, and our barricade won't hold forever. We should go. Let me know when you think you can walk. When you think you can walk. So here's the game, the uh, dungeon part of the game, and we do have a mission here. Talk to the clerics. And Swords Grave, Common Crypt. Times one loot quality. 7% mm -hmm. explored, 0% cleared. So we have a mission. Active missions show up here. Back from the dead. We not, don't have any side missions. We don't have any influence. But if you complete this one, we get 10 influence. Talk to the clerics. Well, we can certainly do that, right? You seem able. Time to move out, says Darnan. Oh, okay, that's easy enough. Let's go ahead and escape the dungeon. Um, and the game, the way it works is we can move around here. Let's go into this area first. I don't see anything in here. That kind of is nothing there to do. Let's go back out. So uh, the clerics we talked to, they're actually in our party right now. So we're not by ourselves, even though it maybe looks like that here. Let's just go down. I'm just left clicking to go down. Ah, restless bones. Looks like there are two maybe enemies in there. In this way. And that sound is kind of loud. I'm not sure exactly how loud it is, but uh, I wish I could turn that down. Cleric Aculite, please stay behind us. You're in no condition to fight. Darnan, we will handle these creatures. Mm, okay, so now... Yeah, they already hit us there. Now we're looking at the tactical combat map here. We're in the back. We're not going to do anything here. But we do have two guys. Two good guys here. That would be Darnan, and that's the Cleric Aculite. And their um, stats are shown here. This is their hit points, the red one, and then the power is on the right. And this circle here shows um, how much of their time they have left in their turn. The game is measured in seconds here. And I believe, uh, yeah, regen regeneration damage per second effects take place at the beginning of each new second. We don't have to worry too much about it, I think, but that's something to keep in mind. Right now we're looking at our um, a Darnan here, I believe, and he has three options right now. That's going to be more, you know, once you uh, get your real party going here. But right now, strike. It's melee. It's a physical weapon. Um, inflicts 19 weapon damage. Improves with weapon damage. And requires melee weapon. Okay, we do have that, it looks like. A mace. Costs zero power, so it's not a magical thing. Uses full action clock. So the whole thing here will be used up. And the cooldown is none. So we can keep on doing this as often as we like. They already hit us there a little bit. You can see our hit points gone down. Looks like we have two skeletons here. And what do they have? Resilient bones. Condition uh, innate, plus 10% resist melee. So they're going to be harder to hit. We also have our combat log. And I set that to detail mode. Skeleton warrior used fierce attack on Darnan Yastakar for 11 damage. Okay. 
So what should we do? Well, this one does 19 damage. We also have Smite, a holy attack. Divine magic inflicting 19 damage. It always hits. But it's going to cost us 30 power, and the blue bar here will go down. We can also do Heal. Heal target ally for 26 health. Removes any harmful poison or wound conditions on the target as well. But it's going to cost us 35 power. You know, I'm going to go first with a strike. And the way the game works is we're in the front row, and here's the back row. You can't hit anybody in the back row until everybody in the front row has been eliminated. Well, that's unless you have a ranged weapon. And this guy up here, he can only hit straight ahead or diagonal. He cannot hit down here until anybody here has been eliminated as well. Sounds maybe confusing, but I'll show you what I mean. We'll take, we'll take these two guys and focus on this one. So he's slightly resistant to melee. Yeah, we saw that 10%, 1% critical chance, I guess, 3% stun, 95% chance to hit is what we have. And we did 17 damage there. And we can look at the log. We use strike for 17 damage. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And now we can see the order of events here. So it's going to be our cleric acolyte, and then the skeletal warrior, both of them. And then it's our turn again. And you can see our ghost there. Now he can do strike, smite, and heal as well. Hmm. But he has 19, and instead of 19 damage, he does 23. Now you can see what's going to happen uh, predicted here. If I use this weapon, this arrow right here shows the damage. He's going to only have a sliver of health left. If I switch to smite, he's going to die. Let's do that. Because that's one less enemy. Yep, he hit him again. Seven damage there. We can look at the log. We defeated him. Skeletal, skele skeleton warrior used cleaving blow. We don't know what that is, but uh, not that effective it looked like. And I think uh, so he lost a little bit of power. Now, darn in here, what should we do? 19 damage or 19 damage? We'll do this one. May not hit, but 95%. Now we can attack with our Cleric Acolyte because there's nobody else in these two tiles. 33 or 23. If I do this one here, he will almost die. Let's use our power. Nice. We got a uh, dominant victory type here. Plus 10% experience, plus one loot item. So it depends on how you do uh, what you get after the fight. And that's going to be right here. Well, let's read this first. I think I'm starting to remember. I am. I was a soldier. Not just any soldier. You're the sword of Ariste. You're one of the finest generals to ever serve the lady, a great hero of the faith. A general? Yes, but I was dead, wasn't I? I remember dying. Well, yes, we used a ritual to revive you. I'm amazed it worked after all this time. What? How long has it been? You've been dead for nearly 200 years. Much has changed. 200 years. Okay, escape the dungeon is what we want to do. Uh, talk to the clerics, we did that. Uh, I guess we have to... Uh, Complete the rest to get our um, to get our um, influence there, and we can use influence later on. We'll look at that when we get out of here. But let's get out of here first. The sword's grave. Hmm. Well, there is somebody here. Restless bones, and that looks a little bit different. Hmm. Okay, let's go have, go for it. Ah, uh, archers. That skeleton warrior is stopping you from reaching the archers. Yeah, this one here. You can't get back there. You'll either have to go through him first or use your smite spell. Some of your battle tactics seem to be coming back. I'm being led into battle by the Sword of Ariste. Okay. They start here and then they do... Oh. Okay, good. Our turn. And they are resilient bones. Melee is what they can resist. We have two melee guys. That's all we do. All we have. Can't get to them until we take care of this guy. So let's take care of him quickly. We'll do 20 damage. See there? Last turn it was 19. I think it improves uh, with intellect, improves. This one improves with weapon damage. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, attack. We're back up to full power, so that's good. Yeah, 95%. Yeah, let's go ahead and attack him. 18 damage. So he has some armor there to absorb some of the hit. And we could do this one 23 or 33. 23 won't quite kill him. 33 will kill him. Let's do that. Okay, now we have the two archers left in the back row. We can get to them because there's nobody blocking our way. Hmm, 20 damage. Uh, 
Keep an eye out for their health. That's all okay, I think. We'll do this guy. And this guy cannot attack the one down here. Same rules apply. If there's a um, opponent in these two tiles, then you can't attack this one if you're up here. Opposite if you're down here, obviously. So if I attack with that, 33 is, oh, is good. It costs us 30 power. And he will die. Let's take him out. I think we got that figured out now, right? And we'll attack here as well. And then we'll do uh, Smite. Holy. And that's the reason it does damage, I guess, because it's holy. Decisive, not dominant. We got plus one loot item. Uh, I don't see it yet, and that's because we're on the tutorial part of it. Uh, we don't actually get to pick anything up. I think that's what the issue is here. Let's just get out of here. See if we can find a way. Ah, stairs up. Let's take him. Leave the dungeon or cancel? We're going to go ahead and leave. Floor fully explored. Good. We made it out. My call stone will work now that we're on the surface. Hmm. Prepare for teleport to the capital. Quest complete. Back from the dead. Ten influence. Well, it's great. So, that is the one we just got. Now we have a new one. Foundations. And that's kind of to ease you into the game. We have ten influence. We'll get a thousand gold and ten more influence if we complete our recovery and discover what lies in store for us. Got to speak with Erinfell. Let's do that. This is the high temple of our faith. You'll be safe here. It's, it's so large. How? The worship of Aries Day has risen in importance since your day. You need time to rest and recover. For now, I will leave you in the care of our brothers. It was an honor to meet you. Thank you both. Some time to gather my thoughts is welcome. Two weeks pass. The cleric Ironfell takes charge of your care. Ironfell, I appreciate your help. I feel much better. But why am I still so weak? It's clear now that your strength will never be what it was, says Ironfell, cleric healer. I'm afraid you will not be serving that lady on the battlefield again. However, there's a chance that you can still put that legendary tactical mind to use. So our tactical mind. What do you mean? My orders are to offer you command of your own company. We'll ma we can't maintain a standing army, but the threats to humanity are greater than ever. We rely on the companies and their elite mercenaries to strike the enemy's heart. I'm to lead one of these companies? How? You must know of command relays. The enchantment was er easier in your day. Command them remotely? I'm not sure, but I can try. I have the paperwork here and some proper clothes. Get rid of those damn rags. So what that means is that we are not going to be on the battlefield ourselves, but we'll have a party of other guys. So now we get to the company creation. So we can name our shield and we can name ourselves Mithril Shield. Omega Legion, Alpha Stars, Red Warriors. Red Warriors, Stone Stars, Dark Scorpions, Stone Spectres, Azure Stars, Ice Ravens. We can also type in what we want, Crimson Moon. We'll go with Crimson Moon. Let's do that. And you can also change your name here. Um, Sword of Aristea, I'm going to keep that. I think that's good. And we will uh, change a little bit here. Something like that. That looks pretty good. Maybe we'll go for Features Hardened Default. Yeah. I think hardened hairstyle, receding, uh, curly, I think styled, and facial hair, jawline, goatee chops, wild beard, no, that's a little bit too much, chops, no, horseshoe, not my thing, we'll goatee, we'll do goatee, and we're going to be a male, we can pick male or female, obviously, and then we have the emblem, and that's right here, and you can scale and rotate that, so you can make a uh, Interesting stuff here. I'm going to go for... Maybe we'll do... Hmm. If I pick this circle, and we'll make it blue. No, we'll make it white. And then we'll pick a symbol here. Uh, let me see what I can find. There. We'll take maybe the shield off. And we don't want it white. We'll pick blue. And it's maybe it's a little bit too big. We'll scale it down a little bit, uh, maybe something like that. I'm not sure I like that background, though, the white. So if we pick a check, no, that checkerboard's not going to look good. That doesn't look good. And I think the gray will go away, depending on the background, what you are. It might be uh, transparent. I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember now from when I played it earlier. Um, that is something about that that I don't like. Ooh, that's too much. 
Okay, so, um, hmm. What if we go back here and pick a shield instead? And we'll take this pattern off. The shield is black. That might work um, if I do white. White is too strong, isn't it? Gray, I don't want gray. Um, well, let me create something here and I'll be right back. Okay, here is my symbol. I'm going to keep this one. Let's go for uh, go to finish. Are you ready to proceed with this company, Founder and Emblem? Yep, we are. All right, quest complete. Uh, 1,000 gold and 10 influence. Excellent. Click to continue. Active mission is now home sweet home. Travel to your new company keep. Yep, that's our place. And speak with the Chamberlain. Travel to Crimson Moon Keep in the Hoarfrost Mountains. Speak to the Chamberlain and we'll get a 100 gold and 3 influence. I guess we'll do that. Yeah, let's say... Um, well, we can go ahead and exit out of that first. We assign each new company a rebuilt keep as a base of operations. As it happens, there's one that's just about ready now. Your new Chamberlain is supervising construction. He'll be waiting for you to arrive. I'm assigning these four mercenaries to act as your escort. Pleasure to meet you. We'll uh, get you where you're going. Once you arrive, you can decide whether to keep them or on your, on your payroll or not. You're in command now. May the lady guide you. Thank you. So here it is, and it is uh, day and night. Will um, time will move on as you um, as you play the game, but it's turn based, so it doesn't happen unless you do something. Here's the world map, which, by the way, you can get to by scrolling the wheel. We're gonna supposed to go here, Crimson Moon Keep, and we're right here at the high seat, the fortress of Iris Stay. There's a couple other places over here too, but we don't really need them right now. We can look and see where we have explored or where we haven't really explored, although it looks like something explored over there. Hmm. All right, so should we go to uh, our keep that's up here? Uh, actually, we can go ahead and uh, uh, click on this one and say travel. Let's do that. You can travel anywhere you want. You don't have to click on a um, or select a specific location. I'll show you that a little bit later. So here's Crimson Moon Keep. That's our place. We can speak to the Chamberlain. We can look at missions, keep upgrades, manage the roster, or cancel. Let's speak to the Chamberlain first. Ah, you must be the new commander. Welcome, welcome. Is the keep ready? It's old but solid. We have basic facilities up and running already. To get labor and materials for further construction will mean calling in some favors. I recommend you try and earn all the influence you can. So we can upgrade it, but only after we earn some more influence. Understood. What's next? These sealed orders are right for you. I assume it's your first mission. The command relay is ready? Yes, sir. It's in your quarters. Thank you, Commander. We serve at your discretion. You can replace us if you choose. Otherwise, our team is ready to go. Then let's get to work. I've rested long enough. Quest complete? Yeah, it's pretty easy, obviously, at the beginning, but tutorial-wise, right? So now we have another mission here. A hive escapes. In recent months, escapes from the Protectorate prison facility known as the Hive have increased dramatically. Travel to the prison and investigate. Travel to the Hive in the Dominion of Ares Day. Speak to the Warden. Hunter Gold, 3 influence. We have 23 right now, okay. It's also side missions. I'm not going to click Travel. That will leave right away. But we can go ahead and not do that, but we can go ahead and click on Crimson Moonkeep again. Let's look at the available missions here. These would be side missions. So level 1 to 3 characters, level 4 to 6, and up to 16 plus. So tier 1, we could do these. You see there's uh, quite a bit here we can do. I like it. But uh, let's not do that. I'm not going to accept that. Keep upgrades. So Quartermaster's Office allows the purchase of special items and upgrades using influence. Callstone, that's a teleport thing. Reliquary allows the installation of relic items for bonuses. Vault allows additional item storage. Training Grout means we can have inactive teams can be assigned to training, earning experience. And Library allows research on artifacts. So we can have multiple teams. I haven't actually tried it, but it sure sounds like it. And I'm not going to build. You can see the money here and the influence. Uh, we don't really have uh, well enough for anything. That's the uh, construction. Manage the roster. So I think the way it works here is that this is our current team. We'll take a look at them in a second. We can have more teams than one. Um, I don't know if I can create one now. I don't think I can. 
Um, that's the active part. If you have four of them, nothing I can do at this point. Four out of four, yeah. And uh, let's cancel out of this. That means we're leaving, well, staying in the fortress. But let's take a look at the screen first. Here we show the current status of our party. It also shows remaining supplies. Well, yeah, we don't have anything right now. Here's the first guy, lady, Matilda, level one warrior. Strength one, endurance one, dexterity one, intellect one. And I believe that an impact influences uh, different aspects of fighting or magic, things like that. And you can see an overview here of their um, stats, 50 health, 100 power, quickness, armor, accuracy. And uh, these numbers are all derived from what you're wearing and your different skills and uh, abilities, basically. Adrenaline is her type. Condition fighting style. That's her fighting style. 100 stun evasion and 10% damage dealt. Hmm. You can pick your fighting style if you have more than one in a battle. So that's kind of interesting. Assign skills. So um, you can gain... Um, there's a skill tree here. Multiple, actually. Here's one, battle. And there's another one called command. You can go and look at them over here. Battle and command. And we can select upgrades here once we uh, get enough experience. Obviously, we don't have anything now. We're down here. One point invested in battle. I think that means we have this one. Yep. And then the command is over here. We'll take a look at that as time goes on. And um, I don't think there's anything else we have to look at here. Oh, wait a minute. There is. Adrenaline is what she's using. She can also use this one, Inspiring. Lead through example. Whenever we deal damage, adjacent allies receive a damage bonus. While active damaging attacks apply inspiration to adjacent allies. And it's free. No power. No cooldown. Hmm. And this one instead gives us more damage and more stun evasion. 15% damage, 10% damage. This one might... That's for the others, though. Uh, once we hit somebody, then other allies can get do more damage. I think that's what that means. So that is Matilda. We can look at the next one, Gerald. He's a cleric. I imagine this, his intellect comes into play as well as strength. And I think probably everybody's using endurance. Mages probably rely uh, completely on intellect. And then... Um, we have archers, uh, dexterity probably, but let's look at that more once we have uh, get into a battle and, and gain levels, things like that. You can see their stats there. Assign skills, well, what do we have? We have the divine and the retribution trees. Hmm. Divine is here, retribution, well, we'll look at that once we get some XP, right? But he does have, Gerald, benediction. Offers immunity to harmful conditions and a 25% chance to remove harmful conditions from others when healing them. Heals may remove harmful conditions, immune to harmful conditions. Okay. Or judgment. While active, apply mark of judgment on the left there. Less stun. Oh, so if you hit somebody, their stun evasion goes down by 25, and their skill power cost goes up by 25%. So that's a pretty good one. Let's keep that in mind. And then we have, who is this here? George. So Gerald, George... Uh, Matilda, George, uh, Gerald, and George. Level 1 Ranger. Archer, yeah. And uh, he's 1 in everything. Skills here. And he has, uh, what does he have? Marksman. 10% damage, extra damage, and 25% accuracy. But he's not as quick. Healing Lore. Reduce power cost nature's bomb. Hmm. Uh, plus 10 uh, health regeneration and 10 health... 10 healing skills bonus. Okay. And he has archery and nature. It's going to come in handy, I'm sure. Sounds like he's going to be a... It sounds like he's going to be in the second row, right behind the, the guys in front. George, level 1 mage. No, wait a minute. George and George. we got to do something about that. <clears throat> Let's go to George here. We're going to randomize that name. Neil Rupert. Sounds good to me. So it's Rupert, level 1 mage. And uh, what does he have? He has empowered fighting style, more damage, but it's more expensive to cast spells. Or arcane armor, more armor and resist magic. So it depends what you do in, in a battle, right? We'll look at their weapons once we get going. But here we are uh, in our keep right now. Looked at our guys. Uh, we also have options up here. We can look at uh, what we just saw up here. And then we can look at the inventory. That is... 
I think a key feature of this game, from what I understand, this is where you can set up very sophisticated types of uh, bags. So you can say, I only want legendary type weapons or legendary type items of this particular type in this bag. So you can really get to your stuff quickly. Uh, right now we don't have anything, but uh, Matilda here is, what does she have? Warrior's Cloak, 10 Defense Rating, Steel Breastplate, you can see here Warrior's Blade, and they're going to have a lot of stuff. We'll look at that, I think, once we defeat an enemy, get some loot, and you can compare stats, I think. And you can go between the different different uh, characters here. So Gerald, Cleric, and Matilda, a warrior, they're going to be in the front line. And I think the ranger in the back, yeah, as well as the mage. That makes sense to me, right? Pretty straightforward there. So what that's that. That would be the company. That would be the inventory. We know the company is Crimson Moon. Um, it's a level 1. We have 1,600 gold. There's our emblem. 23 influence. We're gaining experience here as a company. Doctrines, we need to be company level 2. And then we can get uh, missions. So there's a lot of stuff here, right? Like, for instance, once you get to level 2, two more missions per tier are available to choose from each month. It's uh, quite involved, I think, but that's good. That's really good. That's the status. Parties. We have one. Finances. So we can see how we're doing. Mission rewards 1100. Mercenary payroll 400. Hmm. Keep maintenance. We got to do something about that, right? We're losing money right now. Reputation. There are different parts of the world that we can gain reputation with. And I understand why we have clerics of Aristay. They woke us up. They're neutral. They should be more than that if they woke us up, I would have thought. But anyway, Underworld, Mercenary Alliance, you can see here. We'll see what that actually means in the game. Uh, quests, Hive Escape. That's the primary one we have right now. We'll do that shortly. Bounties is... This is stuff that is available, I think, just as we travel the world. Destroy Orc Warriors. A bounty has been placed in Orc Warriors. Thin their numbers and you will be rewarded. Destroy 12 in total to claim this bounty. We have 26 days to complete it. If we want to make sure that nobody else can take this and we don't have any time limit, we can spend 1,900 gold and 5 influence and then we get it and we can just take our time. But that's too much money, right? I don't think I want to do that. We'll see if you run across any of these and then we can maybe just, you know, finish it off like Dwarf Maniacs here. Only 5... That might be something we can do. I don't know. We'll see how hard it is. And then the menu. Nothing special there. Now, since we're on the map, we could uh, select something here. Protectorate Prison. Um, well, we're in the castle right now. Let's go ahead and leave the castle. And high seat the Fortress of Ariste. Let's uh, go down there first. And then we'll take our main mission. We'll see what we can do here. Available missions here. <clears throat> These would be side quests we can do here. So we have a lot of stuff we can take care of here. Scouts report that Zolothon, Zolothon Fisher has been occupied... Oh, okay, it's a, it's a part in the world. ...by enemy forces. Perform a full reconnaissance of the of the area to determine the extent of the threat. Travel there near the Lake Aurelia. Explore it. And we have 24 days uh, to do it. We get 1,000 gold, 25 influence, and extra influence... Reputation with the Sentinels. We have 50 right now. I'm not going to accept that. That's just something I want to show you. These factions, I guess, are here. There's a shop here, which I didn't know about, actually. So we can go ahead and buy some armor here. Interesting. Um, here's where you can sell. So we have... This is what we have here. Nothing. And you can look at the items for sale. Two different... Okay, two different ones here. And we can go ahead and buy that if we want to. I'm going to stay with what I got now. I think we have... You know, the basic. We need to get some more money anyway. So why don't we go ahead and... Uh, there's a weapon shop. Armor shop and weapon shop. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and speak to the warden by going to the hive. And we could do that actually by going straight here as well. I can do that right now. And daytime comes around. We're exploring. Speak to warden. Uh, or we can talk to the protector. The faction. Stay out of trouble. Okay. Um, we have a little bit of reputation there. Um... Additional tasks. Prove your commitment to the protection of the citizens. Of Rheem. Deliver us shattered skulls, demonic chains, and forbidden writings. If we do that, I guess our influence there goes up. Faction Quartermaster. Um, they have some stuff here. 
Rejuvenation Potion. Okay, good. And cancel. So now I guess we can't... Yeah, we can't speak to the warden here. Let's do that. The Hive. You are escorted into the warden's office. You must be here looking for into our little problem. What can you tell us about the escapes? Escapees? We still don't know how they're doing it, if that's what you're asking. There's one lead. It seems to be... Seems some rabble-rousers just can't stay quiet. The Sentinels have found one of our notable escapees, uh, Hurston. He's been recruiting. Where is this Hurston? Apparently he set up camp in a cavern near Trader's Bay. I think I'll join you on this one and stretch my legs. Well, that's going to be good. I'm sure this hive, garden is, uh, hive warden is a good guy to have. A little chat with Hurston is long overdue. All right, we got a... Well, we completed a quest. Golden influence... Good. And we got a new one now. Hunting Harston. Meet the Warden of the Hive at Harston's hideout. Okay, he's going to wait there for us. Assist him in scouring the location for your target. The Renouncer leader called Harston. Kill him. Escort Hive Warden back, I guess. A thousand gold. Twenty-five influence. Okay, let's go ahead and travel over there. And I can stop any time I want. It looks like we're going this way. If I go to the map, yep, that's down there. Harston's hideout. And I think if we accept a quest somewhere else, we'll see that on the map as well. So you will know where you are. And down here, teleport. Can't do that, I think. And world map. Over here we have healing supplies. Don't need that just yet. Harston's hideout. It's a quest dungeon. Let's go ahead and enter that. But let's do that next time, guys. Hey, guys. This is Time and Tactics. Thank you very much for watching the video. It sure helps me out a lot. If you'd like, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and or that like, and I will see you in the next video.